The FDA approves a first-of-its-kind drug to combat Alzheimer's. Neurologist at UC San Diego Shiley Marcos Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, Dr. Doug Galasco joins us now. First of all, good morning and thank you for being here. Good morning. I, I, I hope I'm saying this correctly. We're talking about, is it Lakembi? Is that how you Th say? That is right. Okay, so talk to us, Lakembi. What is this drug? How does this, how is this supposed to work? This drug binds to a protein that builds up and accumulates in the brain in people who have Alzheimer's disease. And this protein initiates a toxic reaction within the brain. The drug is an antibody that gains access to the brain, binds to this protein, and helps to remove it and to reduce the amount of toxicity. In layman's terms, for those who may be watching, because we know Alzheimer's is something that can really change an entire family. What would this drug mean for them? So the, the drug was tested and uh, has been approved for people who have very early Alzheimer's disease. Um, we think of an entity called mild cognitive impairment, which is one of the earliest clinical stages of Alzheimer's where people are perhaps a little forgetful, need a little assistance with carrying out complex activities, but are otherwise largely independent. So the drug was studied in those sorts of folks over 18 months, and it was shown to slow down progression. It didn't halt progression completely, and it didn't um, reverse memory loss, but it um, maintained people's abilities to be able to function. They showed on average um, somewhere between 25 to 35% changes um, in the rate at which they declined compared to people who received the placebo. So, so this is early onset of, of Alzheimer's, like you mentioned. We're talking about, because I was just looking it up, we have about 15 million Americans who are living with Alzheimer's at this point. So who, who is this not for? If you are um, a ways in, who is this not for, this medication? So, so this is not for people who have established Alzheimer's disease to the mm. point where they are requiring a great deal of assistance. This is not for people who are in um, nursing institutions or anything okay. like that. We don't know how many people will um, eventually be eligible, but again, it's going to lead to an emphasis on early diagnosis and detection. So you would go to your doctor, once an early diagnosis is determined, then this could be something that a doctor would uh, decide to maybe put a patient on. Is that, is that how it would work at this point? Um, so, with some complicated additional steps, because the drug binds to this protein called amyloid, we would want to make sure that somebody really has amyloid in their brain. There are other causes of dementia that can look like Alzheimer's disease, and so a confirmatory test to be sure that someone has amyloid will be necessary. There are a number of tests like this at the moment, they include getting um, something called a PET scan of the brain. This is a nuclear medicine test. Um, undergoing a lumbar puncture, a CSF test, um, which we do in neurology outpatient practice. And there are emerging blood tests. They're not quite ready for um, this particular use, but they could have a huge impact on how we approach the specific diagnosis of Alzheimer's. I'm sure the folks watching at home, if they have a family member or friend and they're hearing this for the first time, they're, they're probably wondering, how do, we, how do we get our hands on this? But this is something that has to be talked to their doctors about, correct? Uh, correct. And we think that this drug is going to need to be prescribed by specialists who have quite a lot of expertise. Mm. Um, in addition to being an antibody that's given intravenously, there are some potential risks associated with the drug, and the FDA, in fact, issued what was called a black box warning. There is a risk of people developing <coughs> bleeding within the brain. Very often, these are tiny little bleeds that we see on an MRI, but they can be significant, they can be a bit larger, and can cause symptoms. And then there also can be areas of inflammation in the brain. 
So once the drug is started, we need to do um, a number of things, clinical exams and brain MRIs, mm -hmm. to monitor um, and mitigate these risks. And that would be a decision, I, I assume, that every family would need to sit down, as most medications come with some type of risk, but the challenges of Alzheimer are, are heavy for a lot of families, so that might be a decision that they want to make. Insurance will cover this, doctor, you think, at some point? We believe it will be covered by Medicaid, uh, at least by Medicare. Okay. Um, one question is how much will Medicare cover mm -hmm. if the coverage is 80% and people have to pay the balance out of pocket. The proposed cost is about $26,000 per year, so there will be a significant mm -hmm. additional cost that patients and their families may have to bear. All right, well this is just the beginning. Dr. Galaska, we appreciate your, your expertise this morning. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for having thank me. You. Yes, thank you.